lovely humans. I don't have anything planned for you today, so I will share my musings and my wishes that that will be of service to you in the moment that you are hearing this. Thank you for being here. Truly, thank you for being here. Spending time with you is a great honor and a privilege, and I do not take it lightly. What's really on my mind is force, push, grind. We're so hard on ourselves. And I know a lot of us came up in a tradition of, you know, uh, track coaches that whip you on the back of the legs to make you run faster or drill instructors that get in your face and scream names at you to force you to do things or even like personal trainers who are just shouting in your face, go, 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 go. And if that works for you, if that is working for you, by all means, continue. And if there are times when forcing yourself, pushing yourself doesn't feel like it's in service to your own well-being, here's your poor poor mission. Here's your permission to do something else. What about inviting yourself? What about cajoling yourself? What about seducing or enticing yourself? What if instead of get up, you stupid beepity beepity beep and do the beepity beepity thing, what if you just said to yourself, sweetheart, sweetheart, I know this feels hard and I know you can keep going? Or what about, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I just do this one thing and this one more thing. A friend of mine who runs marathons, shout out Chris Williams. I was talking to him about how hard that seemed to me. And he said, he just coaches himself every tiny little bit. Hey, you can run one more half hour or you can run and catch up to that guy in the yellow shirt or anything like that. So I know I've mentioned this before, and it's what's present for me, and so I'm sharing it with you, because decolonizing our minds takes practice and reinforcement. You are not worthy because of what you produce. You are worthy because of who you are. And you can, and research supports this, create beautiful, amazing, wonderful things through self-compassion. And those things that you force yourself to do, they drain you and are not sustainable. Those things you compassion yourself to do, you can keep that up all day long. So when you feel that there's the thing you should do and it is so hard to make yourself do it, try inviting yourself, try cajoling yourself. You know, you're feeling depressed and you're like, I can't, I can't get in the shower. Maybe you're like, Sweetheart, I know it feels hard. Can you put your feet on the floor and sit up? And you go, yay, wow, you did great. Can you stand up and walk to the bathroom? Oh, sweetheart, I'm so proud of you. That was wonderful. Hey, what if you grab that toothbrush and put some toothpaste on it? Oh, I know it feels hard and look at you doing it anyway. Be nice to you. Be nice to you. It works. It works. And maybe, maybe if you can compassion yourself, cajole yourself, praise yourself, entice yourself into taking the actions that are in in alignment with your values, you'll just have so much more energy in the day that when tomorrow comes and there's that next hard thing that requires your attention, you have some resources to face it. I can't remember who the eat the frog guy is. Is it Brian Tracy? I'm not sure. I don't remember. But the idea is that if you have a frog to eat during the day, meaning an odious task you really don't want to do, do it first. Get it out of the way. And then the rest of your day is pleasant and ready to go. And you don't have something that you don't want to do hanging over your head. So what if you combined that idea with mine? Hey, kiddo. Just uh, letting you know, if you do the one thing right now, you will get to have some peace and joy and focus on the other things that matter to you. So let's do it, okay? 
instead of get up and do that thing, you stupid, lazy, good for nothing, so and so. Okay, so that's it. That's that's the whole invitation. Entice yourself, cajole yourself, praise yourself, be your own cheerleader, have conversations inside your head because you are anyway. You are talking to yourself all day long. What are you saying? Maybe, just maybe, being nice might be the ticket to being productive and effective and uh, happy. Would that be okay with you? If you got to be happy and joyful too, you also might find that some of those things that you think are hard really aren't. You're making them huge in your head. Oh my God, this is going to take forever and I'm going to hate it. And then when you actually do it, it's like, oh, that was 10 minutes out of my life and it really wasn't that bad. Okay, so to sum up, to sum up, there's something that you need to do do it first. And if you need a way to get yourself to do it, you can try force. You can push and grind and hustle and shout if you want. And, or you can say, oh honey, let's just make that phone call. And once you get it over with, you can breathe a sigh of relief. I got you. Come on, let's go. And then you do it. And then you're like, yay, me. I'm so cool. And you do a little dance and you move on. And you know why you should say nice things to you like honey and sweetheart and cheer you on? Because uh, you're kind of amazing. People talk. They do. They do. They're like, oh my gosh, how amazing are they? And I'm like, yeah, I know. You are whole. You are perfect. You are complete. You are doing the best that you can and you are worthy and deserving of your own praise and your own kindness, and from a shower of gifts from the universe that delight you, mind, body, and soul. Thank you for being here. See you next week. I am so honored that you share time with me. If you've listened this far, then something here was of value to you. Would you please be a friend of the podcast and share it with at least one other person? The podcast is available on most platforms, including YouTube, and I need your help to get the word out. So please like, subscribe, and share, and a five-star review on iTunes would be chef's kiss. Thank you so much. See you next time.